In 1999, John Gotti Jr. travels to Missouri to visit his father, who's serving a life sentence and dying of cancer. He's been indicted, and he's there to tell his father his plans to work out a plea deal. He's thinking of his family, and he wants closure. John Gotti said, Closure. That's an overeducated, underintelligent motherfucker, that word closure. That's a new 90s word, and I don't like it. Welcome to the sit-down, folks. <laughs> Thanks for being here. This song is called Funk for Your Ass. And I was like, it's going on my show. Hell yeah, dude. Is and, that uh, a Penn Gillette on the album cover? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks like him. It's another magician, though. <laughs> <laughs> this album was supposed to be played directly into your ass. <laughs> it was to treat uh, ass cancer. Hell yeah. The voice you're hearing is the voice, the voice of a very special guest. Uh, Mr. Felix Biederman is joining us on the show today. Welcome. And, Thank you guys uh, for having me. Yeah. Do you feel the funk in your ass? I do. I mean, the 70s, <laughs> the 70s were a different time where... Uh, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. You now, know, once you hear that trumpet, it really scoots you around. The, the 70s were not the 70s were not John Gotti's time. <laughs> we picked probably the wrong era of music, but we this we had to throw the show together today. We were just and, talking, we were I just, think yeah. Uh, we were just talking about that like in the we're doing practice streams for my uh, Twitch. It's coming like by the end of this week. We were talking about uh, like one of the funniest things you could do is if you made like a period piece, mm -hmm. but you got the music wrong, but not so wrong it could be a bit just wrong enough that it would make someone insane. Like if you did, <laughs> yeah. it, it, like Columbine is happening, but then Fifty Cent is playing. <laughs> be like, that came out like four that years make, later. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You got it just exactly wrong. I'm getting mad listening to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I lived through Columbine. <laughs> So well, it was yeah. someone's birthday. Yeah, could somebody make that video as well? <laughs> Fifty Cent over Columbine footage, or nine eleven happening, and then you have uh, Ti <laughs> rubber band man. Just wow, this yeah. is <laughs> Brella, Brella. <laughs> mm. Take that. Anyway, well. Today we have a very special episode because I watched the documentary on John Gotti Jr. a while ago, and I was like, we have to have Felix on and do an episode about fail some, uh, mob fail sons. Because um, <laughs> I always hear you talk about fail sons, and they're they're fascinating to me because the idea of like a self made guy, like whatever his kid is, is always going to be like interesting, you know? Yeah, because they become like. They either become like mad in this interesting way, like uh, you know the whole fox catcher thing. Um, J John Dupont. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They become obsessed with achieving this level of prestige outside of what their father did mm -hmm. or mother or whoever. They. Uh, but let's be honest, folks. Yeah, it's their dad. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you uh, if your mom invented a business. You know, who knows what you end up going to RISD or something. It's a different, whole different <laughs> yeah. genus. I'm not trying to offend anyone here. That's just, I've literally taken that from, I've examined one case of that and we're extrapolating it. Yeah. But they will either go mad trying to achieve prestige in some outside realm like John DuPont did and then end up just fucking killing <laughs> one of the greatest athletes in the sport yeah. they're trying to compete in. Yeah. Or they'll mm. just be layabouts and comically lazy and stupid and put in such a low effort to living yeah that it's astounding it's yeah. no it's notable enough to create this different sociological category mm -hmm. of fail son yeah because when i was first watching the interview with Gotti, he was like the the interview was like they've called you the dopey don <laughs> The fucking idiot. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the press. The just... ravioli retard. <laughs> I love I, I love interviews like that. Yeah. yeah. So tell us, how does it feel to be known as one of the dumbest people <laughs> ever in the mafia? That don't bother me. That don't bother me. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. can talk, but yeah, he's had to face his demons for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The stupid retard demons. <laughs> right. Well, let's let's take it back to to John Gotti Jr.'s father, John Gotti Sr. Because Gotti Sr. was from uh, he was from East New York. He was from one of the toughest neighborhoods, still one of the toughest neighborhoods. And um, he was a guy who was just always gonna follow this path. It seems like there's a story about Gotti Sr. where um, he robbed this guy's where this guy Willie Boy Johnson's warehouse. 
and Willie Boy Johnson was like a tough guy and he was looking for him. And Gotti Sr. goes up to him and he's like, I heard you're looking for him. And he pulls out a gun. He's like, I'll put two bullets in your fucking head right now. I don't even give a shit. <laughs> and then that's when he knew he was like the real deal. So like <laughs> he became successful and then there's no way that guy's son is going to is going to do that. Yeah. That's like Jordan level right there. You can't. Comes yeah. once every generation. Right. Or but I was also thinking, like, there are sort of, like, guys that you're just not supposed to fuck with, you know? And it seems like that always comes from a place of, like, desperation. So it almost feels like that's the universe's way of, like, evening things out, where it's like someone has so little, so they just become ruthless. And then it's like they end up... And then people are like, all right, take my... Take my car, take my money, and fuck my wife because I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm afraid to die, and you are clearly not. You know that's right. a good system. You know, yeah. I don't think we've been doing it long enough to. It's figure socialism out it. in yeah, a way. Yeah, exactly. We're redistributing money by giving one person from each neighborhood who is brutal and doesn't care about dying enough. <laughs> yeah. They rise to the top. I don't. We haven't been doing this long enough to know if it's bad. <laughs> right is my thing. One thing, but Gotti is interesting. Something I was thinking uh, about a lot since uh, we arranged to do this is that the rise of the American mob is inexorably tied to the sort of rise and fall of the American empire, right? Because the mob achieved its highest level of power through all the benefits we won by establishing the post-World War II world order. Mm -hmm. We had this incredibly high volume of imports and exports. We had a weirdly strong currency for that. We had all the benefits of like a sort of quasi social democracy that we needed to keep our workers away from even looking at communism. Mm -hmm. And we had this rigid social hierarchy and racial hierarchy that kept everything in line. And for the mafia that gave them endless opportunities to skim off both the massive commercial uh, activity of post-World War II America and to sort of benefit from the rigid social order. It made people like people were still while being prosperous were, were still sort of trapped in tradition. And they, for instance, wouldn't tell on people or would be OK with the hierarchy of the neighborhood guys or whatever. And also people had more money. When people have more mm -hmm. money. They have more money to spend on vices or just more money for you to skim from them to sure. get protection and shit. And I think Gotti is interesting because Gotti, I consider him like the Reagan of the mafia. Mm. And by that, I mean... <laughs> you put him like side by side. A genius. <laughs> a genius. <laughs> the smartest mob guy ever. Yeah, He's the guy your dad talks about at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. You, you put him in all these black mm. people. You put him side by side. You put Gotti side by side with like, guys from a similar time frame, right? Like Anthony Caso, uh, you know, uh, Gigante, which who isn't exactly the same crime, but we're like general 20 year period. He's not any more brutal than them. He's not that much smarter than them, but his image is so good. Mm -hmm. Like he always looks so put together. He always put out this image of like the pillar of his community in Ozone Park. He would, it was like he, he didn't put take it, dumps on the street like Gigante. <laughs> well, that'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, Gigante may have been more the literal Ronald Reagan. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. but uh, he, he carefully crafted and the people around him carefully crafted this myth about him. He was a mythic figure. Okay. But I he, fell for it. I was telling Matt how great he is when I came over here. Well, I mean, yeah. like he dressed really good. And he looked he, good. Yeah. He, like everybody loved him. We yeah. speculated on how big his penis was. Probably pretty big, big dick energy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he, you know, Reagan, similarly, you put him side by side with like the people that others hated from that era or his, his predecessors or contemporaries. People fucking hate George Wallace. People fucking hated, like, eventually came to hate General MacArthur. They came to hate the John Birch Society. But Reagan was pretty similar to them in beliefs and pretty similar to them in how he governed. For all the Reagan hagiography we get uh, comparing him favorably to Trump, we forget he did things like lay a wreath at the tombs of SS soldiers <laughs> and then all mm -hmm. the other ba awful things he did to the economy, he did to, you know, black people, he did to everyone everyone who didn't fit that Reagan America checkbox mm -hmm. yeah. but his branding was so strong like he was looked so put he looked like the president in a movie sure not like Jimmy Carr that fucking pussy <laughs> with like that mop top and his <laughs> yeah. sweaters he looked like that was the guy in charge and he sounded so good yeah and even though you can trace a lot of the degeneration of the American empire, if you're someone who thinks we should have an empire, you should logically trace a lot of our degeneration to Reagan. And if you're somebody who thinks that there should be a, a mob, 
you could trace a lot of that degeneration to Gotti. Mm-hmm. But they have still achieved, even amidst criticism, have achieved this immortality. Rappers still reference John Gotti. People yeah. still talk about there is still something amazingly cool about that John Gotti character, just like to even Democrats, they now lionize Reagan. They just like that character really? so much. Yeah. What do you think it was? Do you think just the just their personality, the way they interact with people? Because I, I watched a little video and there's it's a. Uh, it's Gotti's grandson giving him like a gift on Christmas and he's like, Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's like, you just feel like there's something about that guy where it's like, you want to like impress him, I guess. And yeah. make him happy. Cause you kind of do feel like he's in charge and he knows, you know, the boisterous what Italian. To do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, it's the same thing with Ray. Like Gotti for all the bad things he did, like morally as a person in both, if you're, Someone who's in the mob who would be mad at him <laughs> destroying a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Right. You just see him interacting with people. He has whatever it is. Mm-hmm. He has this star quality that very few people have. Yeah. And it's with Reagan. Reagan, I think, is one of the biggest pieces of shit who's lived in you know the last 50 years. But... Not if it, he has my parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Part of the... Well, part of that is like, okay, what happens after you get shot? Honey, I forgot to duck. Yeah. Like... Whole, you can't teach that. You can't fucking teach yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ted Cruz would never do that. No. Like, when Ted Cruz tries to be funny, people, every, like, it feels like everyone in, in the world is like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It I remember my grandfather, like we were watching something on Reagan, and he was like, you know, when Reagan, uh, when he got operated on, he told the doctors, he was like, I hope you're not Democrats. And my grandfather thought that was very funny. <laughs> it's not even a good joke. It's no, such it's an not. old guy joke, but he yeah. can sell it so well. Yeah. Yeah. It's like dad humor. Yeah. Do you think maybe Felix part of that was like the commitment to who he was? Because because um, there was a documentary on him about him on A&E. And it's when his son goes to meet him in prison. And he's like, this is where I this is where I belong, John. This is my destiny. I'm supposed to be here. And I don't know. M- maybe it's like he's too dumb to think outside of that of um his code that life and his code but there is something i don't know i mean maybe i'm like falling for it but there is something kind of like admirable about that i think he sort of has a performer personality Mm -hmm. and a lot of act reagan was an actor Mm -hmm. have it and it's not necessarily that they are being insincere it's that they don't know any other type of interaction than performance Mm -hmm. and i think Gotti was someone who performed his whole life. Even when he was killing people, it was part of a performance. It was mm-hmm. part of a wholesale effort to create this image. Mm-hmm. And even when he's talking to his son, his son or his grandson or who he is, maybe unconsciously, maybe uh, instinctually creating this performance. I think mm-hmm. Trump does that too. Yeah, Trump is someone who's all performance, but you also don't see him having an internal monologue. Mm-hmm. It's just instinct for him. It's yeah. instinct for him to act a certain way. Yeah, yeah. And Trump really is giving people like my grandparents like a great story, you know? Like, I just think about how happy <laughs> my... Na- yeah, my 92-year-old grandmother must be so happy to see this, like, this, like, golden-haired, like, tough guy just, like, boss people around and, and finally, you know? <laughs> it's Beyonce for people like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was in. Did I tell the story on the show before? I was in L.A. I was writing for a show, and like everybody in L.A. was just like really bummed after he won. And like I go in the writers' room, and everyone's like, "Yeah, I, I don't know." And I call my grandmother and put her on speakerphone, and I'm like, "Congratulations!" And she's like, "Thank you. We made history." <laughs> she's just so fucking happy. <laughs> it makes you wish that like Trump could be elected to a purely ceremonial position just to like make all our nation's old people happy, but he can't actually do anything. I know. Uh, he, oh, America's man. special know. guy. Yeah. How great would it be if, if Hillary will or if somebody else won and I just told her he was president? <laughs> you That's could, probably why yeah. she hasn't died yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could pull the wool over. I thought about trying to do that with my grandmother and like I don't know who she would have wanted to be president. Probably like something weird. Someone who's been dead for like 70 years, like Al Smith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she can barely work her phone. I'd figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy well, Giuliani. <laughs> oh, that's another one. My parents. Yeah. Oh, they love him. They love him. He yeah. got rid of cleaned up New York. Cleaned up New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it was to take the bus in from Jersey and walk two blocks to my office <laughs> from Port Authority. <laughs> You don't understand. There was porn everywhere. And now it's only on, now it's only in Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so, you know, God, he rose to power pretty quickly. He always wanted a son. He had two daughters who gives a shit about them. And he told his wife, uh, <laughs> I need a son. And then when he finally had one, he was elated. And it was, uh, it was John Jr. And, um, John Jr. I think is an interesting guy. You know, he was a bodybuilder. He had four kids. Um, but then when he was indicted, he wasn't sure if he wanted to, you know, uh, he wasn't sure if he wanted to take a plea deal or if he want, and, and get out of the life or or do his time. And his father was very adamant about like, no, you stay here. This is who you are. You do your time. He's like yelling at him. He's like, where's your he goes, where's your dignity? Where's your manhood? And I guess maybe there was something about him where he, he liked uh, being in jail. You know, he, he liked he liked the idea of like, yeah, I'm going to die here and I belong here and fuck everybody. Yeah. Well, that's the weird, the, the weird thing about uh, jail, right, is I think American prisons are horrifically brutal. I think our sentencing is horrifically brutal, such mm-hmm. to the point that we have no right to really lecture the rest of the world on anything. But I think for a certain type of guy like Gotti that just becomes your life and you get used to it and you can adapt to it. Obviously that's not the case for everybody given the high rate of suicides within our prisons, but for a guy like that, you get all the good boy pussy, you know, (laughs) there is such, (laughs) everyone gives you their fruit cup. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's like, like Gotti, someone like Gotti is someone who he could find the hierarchy and ascend to through it his entire life. Like that was just his instinct, his Mm -hmm. ability. And I think for him, yeah, you probably miss Brioni suits and like the good food and like being out till like six in the morning with your friends and driving Cadillacs and all this shit. It's like being a podcaster. Exactly. Exa- <laughs> well, I'm out on Xbox Live with my friends till six. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he, at a certain extent, those things are only secondary benefits to a guy like that. What he really likes is ascending to the top of the hierarchy. And he probably achieved that pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I know he got beat up in another stretch of time, but like probably when he first got in there, it was probably very easy for him. Yeah. 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 Prison was like a second game for him. (laughs) Yeah. It's a game. Their entire life is a game where they're like, how can I climb this ladder? Yeah. Right. That most vicious type of person. Right. Let me ask this, Felix. Do you consider his son uh, a fail son? Because I feel like for for the life that he had and where he was brought up in and everything and how how things ended up for him, I think he got like, kind of lucky to get out. Yeah, I think he, yeah he's a fail son because he has that thing that a lot of fail sons have, where they just like, how did this work out for you? Mm-hmm. How did you beat the feds? No one beats the feds. Right? They are no one fights dirtier than fe- federal prosecutors in court. And you got out. How did you do? And of all the people, it was you, the dumbest one. <laughs> yeah, but that is the magic that sometimes they get a little bit. They yeah. get a little bit of that. Sp- Casa still in jail, and like everybody else. Yeah, it's like he gets a little bit of that, like little mad that it power that his dad had, mm-hmm. but it, he could only use it once. And it's the dumbest guy alive beat the feds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he thought he got bamboozled, though, right? He thought he was going to go away, get away scot-free, and then, like, they indicted him after that. He got, like, really upset at his uh, attorney. Oh, yeah. Well, feds never lose, really. They're, if we didn't win, we're going to try again. Yeah. We'll find a way to get you. Yeah. Well, that's what his father said to him. He was like, listen, if you make this deal, they're going to keep coming back, and they're going to keep using you, like, over and over again. You yeah, know? He was kind of right. Yeah. Um, but you also get the the sense with Gotti Jr. That, that this wasn't really a life that was like for him. He wasn't destined for this kind of life. It, it's almost like he did love his father and like idolize his father. But it's almost like he was trying too hard to like, you know, um, have these values and, and, yeah, and be live like his, his life. dad. He was trying to be like him. Yeah. You know, being an enforcer just like him. Yeah. In that doc, he said, like, if my dad was a butcher, I would. I'd also be a butcher. <laughs> like right. He very much uh, blamed it on the situation, which it would be hard to not be, you know, in a weird situation. Like it's, it's like not a great, is there like a successful son whose dad was like so much better than them in anything? Can you think of any situation? Uh, Frank Stallone. Oh, that's his brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Franklin Roosevelt had some reasonably sco- successful kids. Oh yeah, okay. What about the Kennedys? You know, uh, do we call that success, or do we call that you know he failed to 
pilot that plane or just <laughs> unforeseen <laughs> circumstances, a familiar curse. Right. But I mean, Robert Kennedy became like an anti-vaccination activist. So, right. You know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess like Fred Trump was like kind of an impressive like uh, post-World War II New York real estate scumbag, right? Mm hmm. Like just one of those guys who would just do whatever to anyone for any just for any advantage to himself and yeah hey his son became president yeah okay yeah <laughs> I wonder what the what difference could... was between Eric and Don Jr. the way they were brought up because they don't seem like they right. don't have really that killer instinct right right they don't yeah. have any of Don and Baron <laughs> yeah because they have the <laughs> awful gift uh or the awful burden of feeling embarrassment yeah <laughs> yeah not their dad can just, just go through like there is a news report every day in the new york times in all the most widely read papers in america on every news station that's like here's another update uh everyone around the president thinks he's a fucking idiot <laughs> here's some very specific details about what a stupid baby he is yeah he wants a special ice cream he yeah. like he you misses can't watching watch porn <laughs> yeah, he, misses, he misses watching like access hollywood because he's a fruity old man <laughs> he doesn't know anything and it's like everyone he yeah. considers himself friends just leaks these details about him being a yeah. fucking idiot every day <laughs> and he just wakes up every day and he's like time to do it again that's what I, that's made up yeah. that's made up i don't care like imagine <laughs> yeah. if it just yeah. for a day there was like a news report from like the people you spent the most time with and it was just embarrassing details about you and everyone talked about it <laughs> how could you go on yeah like if i leaked that mike like riverdale or something he's like yeah, what am I, Frank? If you leak, it would be more like if you leaked that Mike wished that Riverdale was real so he could live in it. That's closer closer to the Trump leaks. But, you did that, but then if Mike was like, well, all right, another day. That's made up, by the way. I do not wish Riverdale was real. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you kind of do get the sense that he was sort of like, this wasn't really who he is, and he was doing his best to sort of embody those those values. Mm -hmm. Felix, what do you think? If you have a wife, is she allowed to call the exterminator? Because I'll tell you what John Gotti Jr. <laughs> would say about that. <laughs> Not a problem, I think, it exists, but... Let's uh, see. Whoops, sorry. Wait, my bad. Okay, let me rewind this. Let me rewind this. Regards to a lot of different things. I mean, you know, the old me, uh, my wife wasn't permitted to get on the phone and talk business with a guy, for crying out loud. If she had to call up the exterminator and it was a guy, I would, would have told him in the past, uh, doesn't he have a secretary you could talk to? What do you have to get on the phone with a guy for? There's no need for this. No, don't do it again. That's the old me. me now, today's, that's old school. That's old school and that's the way I was raised. Yeah, that's baby. not old school. That's <laughs> old school to the point that you like live in the caliphate. That's yeah. like you should just join ISIS if you believe that and <laughs> move to yeah. move to Raqqa. Yeah, that's you so funny. Man, these guys are like these Muslims are coming here. They abuse their women. <laughs> 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 they won't let them have their own lives. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try try having a feminist podcast in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, um. Yeah, they would. They would probably, uh, probably get along, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, where the hell was I? Um, oh, also, like he's he doesn't seem like he's that good of a liar. Like he told the story about. Um, he's like, yeah, I was at a bar and uh, some guy kept bothering me. He said, let me buy you a drink. I said, no, I'm all right. He kept bothering me. He's like, let me buy you a drink. I cracked the glass over his head, and then everybody in the bar started fighting. He's like, the next day, my father came to my room. He said, what happened last night? I said, I don't know. He said, you had a fight. I said, yeah. He goes, somebody died. And then I found out that uh, someone did die, unfortunately. That <laughs> is like, uh, is that a Mike Diesel story? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it, right? <laughs> he killed a guy. <laughs> yeah. Mike Diesel Mike literally Diesel has a story like that. I know. <laughs> no, Mike Diesel was one that killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he applied too much pinky pressure. <laughs> Um, no, but it does sound like it's his, his line of logic is like, I smashed the glass over the guy's head and then everybody started fighting and then somebody <laughs> died. And it's like, yeah. it sounds like you might've, they, you might've killed this guy. Right. He, and he like, for some reason he pictured this like uh, riot he started. <laughs> I what? could only assume yeah. like started like an animal house riot. <laughs> we gotta get you out of here. <laughs> yeah. Someone might die. That's like, that yeah. makes no, that makes less than no sense. That's like. 
that would happen in like a kennel for abused pit bulls. Yeah. Like if you hit one, they would all just start freaking <laughs> right. out. Right. Like even right. like even like a Fun dumb <laughs> it's a nineties movie. <laughs> even like a dumb like a bar full of like <laughs> like a dumb mafia bar. Like if you hit one guy just like, like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Like presumably you're sitting at a table with your friends and you're like, Oh, I guess it's the fighting time and you just beat the shit out of the guy closest to you. <laughs> yeah. Um but uh, yeah, so probably yeah, not that good of a liar. But things are things are going okay now for John Gotti Jr. He did about seven years in prison, and uh, same time as John McCain. Oh he's yeah, he's also a hero. <laughs> POW prison. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nice. Um, yeah, he did seven years. Now he's got a he's got an Indian room in his house with uh, sculptures of Indians, like uh, Indi- Hindu um, Indians. No, or? like American Indians. He that- was like, "Quote, it's my Indian room. <laughs> I respect those people a lot." That is a classic uh, dumb guy thing. Is it? Dumb guys think that um, Native Americans have like magical powers they can absorb. <laughs> it's uh, like, wait, really? wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you telling me we can't absorb these powers? I'm sorry. No, it's like it is like a classic. That's why yeah. like every this might not be as big a thing here. Like it might not be as big an East Coast thing. But I think in the Midwest where I grew up, I. Uh, I, I feel like there is a subconscious guilt that drives people there insane mm. because like, you, so you know, put you, them on your denim jacket. Exactly. Like, like you know, you know that like, if not your ancestors, you're there because we just exterminated these people. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I, well, I can't, my, my brain isn't really long the way to process this being genocide and like stolen land, but we can honor these as like just these amazing people with magic powers that disappeared for some reason. <laughs> and that's how like their dumb brain and that's why you get so many guys yeah. like in the midwest who are like yeah i'm actually a uh, part native american <laughs> it's i put my ear to the ground to sense if cops are on the highway so i don't get duis yeah. and it's like i don't really think that's a native american <laughs> thing but yeah. it, it, there there is this like fascinating dumb people yeah they can't just process like a historical event it just it has to be yeah. that there's you know, uh, it's the classic line of like, hey, you know, I'm not superstitious, but there's something out there. <laughs> yeah. And so John Gotti, uh, John A. Gotti, one of those guys. Sometimes they also use the Native Americans as like a, a, a way for like to justify their racism against uh, blacks. They'll be like, well, nobody had it worse than the Indians. All right. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's a great. I love that. I love that line of reason. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so bulletproof. I know. Yeah. You better not hope Uncle Jerry breaks out his. <laughs> what about the Indians line? <laughs> you just, no defense against that. You just shit your pants and you, you have to leave Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you this, Felix. Is it is it like how do you how do you be successful and and uh, not have a fail son? I well, I um, speaking as someone who is a fail son until like three or four years ago. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. don't. I don't really know. I think. Part of it is luck. You have some lucky fell sons. I consider myself that. Mm-hmm. I just posted forever, and then the economy <laughs> permitted posting to be a career, and I had spent all this time practicing oh, it. And they're okay. like, okay, here you go. Yeah. So it sort of like, happened. Oh, by, thank you. It sort of happened by accident for you. Yeah, oh yeah, I thought yeah. I was going to. I, I I got it together enough to try to get an office job, and then still too much of a fell son to figure that out. Mm-hmm. But and I thought I could pursue my passion of posting in the meantime. But <laughs> then it's like this is really the only skill that I've developed. <laughs> yeah, so I have to pursue this. Interesting. Hmm. Do you want kids? I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I um, you know, I think about how sometimes I will not really like i'll forget that uh i'm not supposed to have like three empty like cardboard cases of like seltzer on my couch like yeah. that looks bad when people come in yeah and it'll be like that for two weeks and i'll be like all oh, right i'm supposed to clean that up and it's like <laughs> what would i do with a kid yeah like yeah. that's just what i'm doing with my couch i have a new i have a new like gaming rig it's the most money i've like ever spent on <laughs> nice. something and i'm like i'm gonna break this somehow i know i am mm-hmm. the kid would force you to clean up there's no way you no could, yeah you know <laughs> what i mean <laughs> but, but, but I, I i don't know it's like it's possible that's the really bad thing is my if i had a kid they would probably because money just snowballs in america mm-hmm. it's the reason that like i'm 
like fine is because my, my dad was fine. you just have a way there's like this dumb confidence you get from not having to worry a lot that makes you able to take more risks mm -hmm. and it means that my kid would probably grow up like upper middle class like i did or higher and the thing that sucks shit about that is your kid is either fucking AJ Soprano right. or they're like a hyper ambitious like State Department intern with just no soul. Yeah. Yeah. Just a fucking freak. And it's like, yeah, I don't know if I want either of those. Right. I, I mean, guess the only way to do it would be if I like gave away so much that they were raised like at the level I was raised at or like a little below. Right. Yeah, maybe, I think so. You could, maybe, you could maybe like train them in something else. You know what I mean? Like, it's possible, like, you know, like, let's say a comedy writer, you train your son to be like a star tennis player. Or or you go to the orphanage, you find an Asian kid and be like, is this one gay? And then you train it to do comedy. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he's got his own TV show by, yeah. by the time he's 15. Yeah. And then you got a writing job. Yeah. You know, a the, writing job. Yeah. A series, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the only group of people, like the only empire that like solved the fail son problem it was the British Empire. Okay. And each generation was like more brutal and ruthless than the next. And mm -hmm. it was because the British boarding school system, like the public schools that they sent the rich kids to, the stay, you know, the where you lived there. They were sodomized constantly. Yeah. It was just, they literally oh, okay. kept and that, the, that humbles you. Ah, they, yeah. they, it just made them so insane mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. it was like, by the time you're 18, you're like, all right, I have to go to one of the colonies to kill some people. Mm -hmm. And right. you're just, you I'm, can't, I'm, you can't really be a foul son because you've just been subjected to systematic pedophilia <laughs> that's supposed to make you yeah. an, an and that was the masters of the school. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm picturing dead okay. poet society type schools because you're a little too confident sometimes right and yeah. had i gone to the proper school yeah i took care of my i'll be the proper special, school no. special patreon episode school. <laughs> where i rape matt <laughs> what, what <laughs> if get a little home school in <laughs> what, yeah. that what if that that was a thing in the uk it's like it, it's like continuing education for adults it's like well i never really got the chance to experience like a brutal sodomy based punishment system and i feel like i need to better myself as an adult you know i'm about to have a kid and i'd like to have the you know the will of someone like cecil rhodes yeah, oh hello governor <laughs> welcome to the sodomy school for 28 year olds <laughs> my dress is a nun <laughs> yeah it's, you, you, a headmaster it's like it's like going to driver's head as like an adult you're like oh this is so embarrassing I'm in the sodomy <laughs> class with these like 15 year olds. 15 year olds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, it's like that Brooklyn uh, preschool, but it's just like a boarding school to get sodomized. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret of the hostages, too. Yeah. Because it's not like the, it's like just for generations and generations, they've achieved. Uh, scores of men per family who all own like roach motels or whatever they do i don't really know what they do but it seems like <laughs> it's a real racket it seems like they've figured something out yeah yeah they got their own buses <laughs> 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 what are they doing <laughs> how many oh, how many school buses wow. do you see over there i'm living my dream driving this bus you know <laughs> usually my hot seat accent's better can i try it again <laughs> no yeah go take two Oh, nothing better than being a pedophile who drives a school bus. <laughs> they right. Much better, much no, better. They yeah, do be saying weird. that. Yeah. <laughs> we saw a massively overweight uh, Hasidic man uh, sitting on a bench, and Andy, uh, my roommate, was saying it's it's like Jewish Santa. <laughs> and you just tell him what presents you want him to take away. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. the, I like the idea of someone, so like a woke guy, like fucking up the G hack Jesus Christ thing and being like, actually, Santa Claus was a brown Middle Eastern Jew. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Now let's talk about uh, somebody. Well, Felix, do you have a favorite fail son? It, mob or in general? In general, first. Let's start there. Because in, I'll tell you who mine is. In general, I would say my favorite uh, fail son is Kaiser Wilhelm II. Oh, from yeah, you know, I just read an article about him. What, what Luckily. What was his? <laughs> uh, he was like the Kaiser of Germany uh, during World War One. But go ahead and elaborate on that. Yeah, he well, he had like a baby arm, like DJ Paul from Three Six Mafia, because oh. he's so inbred. Okay, and there were a lot of guys like this at the time. In fact, it's interesting. The one guy who was like the descendant of uh, 
uh, uh, of of a great ruler who people actually thought had had like a little you know shine factor it was the first guy who got killed it's like kicked off world war one it was franz ferdinand <laughs> that was the right. one group guy from that group who people were like all right that guy's got a little something pop but kaiser wilhelm had a complex his whole life of like living up to wilhelm the first mm. And it made it made him so insane that he tried to micromanage every avenue of the military, of industry, and and the war, and just fucked it up horribly. And you can make the argument that Germany, uh, the uh, the failures of Germany and the punishment that was inflicted on Germany as a consequence of those failures and the bellicose behavior of Germany before the war, that the consequences of World War I created some of the worst aspects of the 21st, 20th and 21st centuries, right? Yeah, Israel and all that. Right. You don't have, you know, fucking Wilhelm II and you don't have the Treaty of Versailles. It's, you know, obviously there was a lot of a cultural history of anti-Semitism in Europe, but it's less likely that the Nazis rise, that there isn't this brutal period of hyperinflation and the the sort of center left stabbing the left in the uh, stabbing the left in the front, I guess, in that period. <clears throat> and you don't get you don't get this sort of rickety international order we got created after World War II. I don't know what it looks like. It's easy to say that it would be better, but for better or for worse, because we honestly don't know, it's very hard to play a hypothetical going back that far. This foul son is not singularly, but has an incredible personal responsibility for our modern world. Interesting. It sounds like it would be real hard to have a baby arm. It made him a little nuts. Like, just it made like him a little crazy. Just separating like yeah. everything he did and how he came short. Like that sucks. Yeah, you know, to have a baby on. <laughs> they said, like, like Trump, he would like ramble a lot and like go off script, and he was very hard to like rein in and stuff oh, like that. Well, that's and, that's. Yeah. I always thought that Trump Hitler comparison was so stupid. Uh huh. It's like he's closer to Wilhelm the Second than anyone, right? So you you don't got your Hitler yet. Just wait. Yeah, yeah. At least yeah, his th dad wasn't a pitcher though, or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're both like trying to be like starting pitchers. Do you guys have favorite Vel sons? I, I would say maybe this one. Not all day to pay for this. 6,000 square foot house, big screen <laughs> TVs, food on the table, video games, all kinds of scooters and bicycles, Columbia University, and for what? To come home to this? Sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. <laughs> um, maybe the, Jackie Jr. Jackie Jr. is... Well, that... Isn't that the two type of uh, two types of fell sons? Yeah. Jackie Jr. who tries to be his dad, but just has none of the hunger that his dad had and just can't do it and he's too dumb. Or AJ who's just like given up and goes from thing to thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, AJ <laughs> Soprano is one of the greatest characters ever on TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect that that's how Matt pulled up a clip where uh, remember he was on his computer, he was laughing. Yeah, and Tony he, gets so mad. He's just like an <laughs> adolescent <laughs> laughing, discovering the internet with this, you know, talking to his friends or something. Tony's just like so disgusted. Yeah, if Tony Soprano was any of our dads, he'd be disgusted with us, I think. That was yeah, that scene hit me the hardest out of anything I've ever seen. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, oof, I felt that one. Yeah. It was very much like what are you doing indoors? You fucking mm. loser. It's yeah. not even that it's yeah. like, why are you so happy? Like, look <laughs> yeah. at you. Yeah. <laughs> you just hunched over a computer. <laughs> you disgust me. Yeah. 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 Were, you a, were you a fat kid? I, well, I, was, I wasn't I was fat, like, for the first, like, two or three years of high school. Then I got fat, like, senior year and then into my early adulthood. Okay. And then I got in shape again. Okay. But I kind of, I was like a chubby child. Yeah. So back it was back forth. and forth a lot. Yeah. I'm about to enter a new fat period, I think, in about a year or two. I'm you due. think you can only yeah. work out for so long before you're like, I think I look good as a fat guy. Well, that's why I need to sell a show. I need to get like Jeff Bezos steroid money <laughs> so I can never do that again. Yeah. It's I've already personal learned, chef. Yeah. I've right. already learned all the lessons that I needed to learn as a fat kid. It mm -hmm. already has benefited me enough in my life. I don't need, to, I don't need to go back to school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, well, let's talk about maybe the Hall of Fame of Fail Sons. Uh, let's talk about Netanyahu's kid. 
<laughs> Yair Netanyahu. This guy's great. He was caught on a uh, surveillance uh, recording saying, uh, bro, you got to spot me. My dad made an awesome deal for your dad, bro. He fought He fought the <laughs> Knesset for this, bro. And then, uh, yeah, this he was talking about January prostitutes. I, I, I heard there was another story. Like some, he, he wouldn't pick up after his dog, and he like cursed at some lady who gave him a hard time. Oh, yeah. For he's, that. he's every stereotype of like a kid like that you would expect. Yeah. yeah. But Jewish kid. Yeah. <laughs> I was no. like, I, I like searched for like this kid's name and like dabs because he just seems like he would be the. Yo, yeah. He's the type of guy who like dabs in 2018. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's also super funny that uh, the family is like, this is illegal. This is an outrage that someone would record our, our 26 year old son with no job. <laughs> talking yeah. like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, right. he's an upstanding me, young man. Spot me 400 shekels. Yeah. Well, he's at a strip club. He, he is such a good fail son because he's like very AJ. Mm -hmm. And Israel is a lot like the mob because it's like, this relatively recent invention who that we pretend has an ancient meaning. I mean, what do, what do they do during making ceremonies in the mob? They like burn a picture of a saint and they're like, well, you'll, your soul will burn forever and say some shit in Latin. And sometimes like, it's tissue when they don't have the picture of the saint. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, it's like, you're, it's like, why are you pretending that this is some like great eternal yeah. metaphysical tradition? And they kiss each it's other not, on the lips. Yeah, you're just kissing your friends so you can steal together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Israel, Israel is the same way. It's like, there's a, it's like Netanyahu. Netanyahu. Israel's kind of like AJ. It is. And the biggest AJ of Israel is Netanyahu's son. I mean, Netanyahu himself, he has like this stone carving in his office that he's like, see that? That's from uh, 6,000 years ago during the northern kingdom of Israel. And that is my name, Netanyahu, up there that shows that we've always been here. And it's like that name was literally created in Hungary in, <laughs> or Lithuania in yeah. like the 1800s really like the most jews we have made up names if your name isn't like cone or something like my name's made up my last name biederman is a made-up name for us to sound more german jewish okay it's like it, it's we stole it from somebody it's mm -hmm. <laughs> none of us had that we probably didn't have last mm -hmm. names before like the 1800s mm -hmm. it's true of most jews but uh it, it, his son is perfect because it's like Netanyahu is sort of a Tony figure like he's he's the boss of yeah. this made up thing <laughs> and he's always in charge he's always got the right thing to say yeah. he's the biggest swinging dick who's in the, the room. who's the Pauly Walnuts of Israel of uh, Victor Lieberman okay uh, and uh, I guess Carlo Gervasi would be Naftali Bennett okay but uh, he he's perfect because it's like he wants to be like his dad but doesn't have any of Benjamin Netanyahu's cutthroat ability or the psychosis that Netanyahu got from his brother Yonatan dying uh, during an IDF military operation that made him go, OK, I have to live up to him because Yonatan was like the he was like the big star. Oh, OK. Yeah. And that's almost like Interesting. it's almost like Bibi Netanyahu had his own um, uh, Tony Blundetto in Yonatan. Uh -huh. But Yonatan never came back. Yeah, so he was like he was like the star, and then he sort of felt like he. So he probably feels like a fraud, and that. Oh, maybe, a little, yeah, yeah. He's got to. I mean, he knows he's a fraud. He's a fucking criminal. Mm -hmm. That's it. In addition to running this apartheid state, he's also like a criminal. <laughs> yeah. Nice. He's like, this is my name, Netanyahu. It's on the stone, and uh, that's my son fucking a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he get in trouble? His son got in trouble too for dating a non-Jew. That yeah, was, for dating a, like a Swedish goy. That's so and also, funny. his son got in trouble for like sharing alt right memes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I and saw and that. then David Duke was like, "Wow, just wow." <laughs> yeah, David Duke talks like a nineteen year old uh, girl who does Pinterest. I guess <laughs> he kind of does. Yeah, S S M H. Shaking my head, shaking my damn head. Oh yeah. Also, somebody was like, "Oh, if you're going to talk about fail sons, you should do Fredo Corleone." But I feel like Sonny is more of the fail son because he was sort of like right. set up for success, and he just totally fucking blew it. it was, you said he was a hothead. Yeah, he was a hothead. My favorite thing about Sonny and Matt reminded me of this the other week is that the right that in the book this isn't in the movie that they literally have a plot point like it's not even a plot point because they never follow up with it that Sonny's dick was so good he ruined this woman's pussy <laughs> oh yeah it's so like how it, can he be a failed son Mike well the, I, that, that's the thing I don't think 
Mario Pazu wrote him to be a foul son, he's like, no, look how cool he is. He broke this woman's <laughs> pussy. <laughs> But it, he is, though. He is. He was supposed yeah. to be the heir apparent, and he was just so pissed off all the time. It got him killed. Yeah. Mario Puzo took the book, and he showed it to, like, his uncles, and they thought they'd be really impressed. And they'd be like, you know we can't read. <laughs> 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 what are you bringing these fucking books over here for? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. We So we talked about... Uh, we talked about... Uh, what the hell's that kid's name? What the hell's that kid's name, Matt? Which... Safe the, the celebrities, or? yeah. No, BB's kid. No, I don't remember. <sighs> you don't remember. Yeah, I actually I'm forgot. Sorry, I got you. I, I, no, his name is. Uh, I still have that Michael Jackson clip on the on the brain. Yeah, <laughs> I watched a celebrity kids let down YouTube a compilation. Oh yeah, there was a thing where uh, people were like, uh, Mike, they were like, Michael Jackson's one of the most controversial and beloved figures, and they showed him <laughs> dangling his kid over the balcony, but. <laughs> It's not like he's gonna drop him, you know. <laughs> like I, it's like it's, someone getting mad at me for the way I hold my dog. It's like it's my fucking dog. It's just funny With, that, in that clip. They're like beloved celebrity. <laughs> it's just a like dangling. It's not him like playing music or like a safe clip. Yeah, so funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about because we watch a lot of these documentaries and like you always, um, you always talk about the feds a lot and it's always interesting to me to see the way that the feds sort of like experience these guys and, and talk about these guys. And it always does feel like, um, sometimes criminals sort of have like a more keen understanding of the world and having to go out and, and make your own living. And the feds just like, don't get that. And they don't get why, you know, lucky Luciano would be friends with Meyer Lansky and they just don't they're like oh you got to remember these these people are breaking the law okay and you're like <laughs> yeah sit down <laughs> well feds feds are such weird people because you know to become a fed you kind of had have to have wanted that your entire life or positioned your life to get that because mm -hmm. you can have never consumed a drug oh you oh. you know you get just all these things that's why there are so many mormons yeah they do that the hair follicle test yeah okay uh but yeah it's um it, they it's the exact wrong people to understand these people yeah because they have a very black and white pretty stupid understanding of the world i mean look at james comey mm. james comey fucks up the election <laughs> like if you're gonna i don't believe in pinning the election <laughs> on like any outside forces because it shouldn't have been close but if you are <laughs> if you are gonna pin it on one guy it's james comey right this is that letter because he's afraid of people getting mad at him, but yeah, doesn't... did that influence the way people voted? Though I think I, it I did. did. Yeah, I think it did. I think it like made some people stay home or mm -hmm. <clears throat> sort of gave Trump some momentum. Mm -hmm. Again, it should not have been close, but yeah. yeah. But he does this because he's panicked and he wants everyone to like him, and then he like does the biggest favor anyone could do for Trump. Trump like talks to him a few times and decides he doesn't like him. And gets fight like he gets humiliated by the dumbest guy he's probably ever met, and then he writes a book on how he how good he is at leadership and yeah. how everyone needs to follow his. That's like Fed mindset. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's different than mob guy. Like mob guy mindset is like this like dumb bullish confidence. It's yeah. like let me tell you how to be a fucking man. But Fed confidence is like. You could like Robert Mueller. Robert Mueller testified in front of Congress that Iraq had WMDs. He fucked up several high profile cases, but he's just like, no, I'm the guy who's going to get this all right. Mm -hmm. it, it, Fed mindset is it doesn't matter what you fucked up. It doesn't matter what you got wrong. It doesn't matter how many lives you destroyed. It's like, no, this is this is my role. This is yeah. my title. This is my uniform. If you notice how Comey and uh molar dress it's as much of a uniform as Gotti or gas pipe or any of those guys yeah, right there's a fed uniform maybe it's that's like sort of like so a, bad is because they're always concentrating on how well they got to be groomed you know like mad men can you cut your microphone off yeah. again please here we go all right i've been cutting matt's microphone it's pretty good um but um yeah uh where where was it <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, because it, it is a very it is a very like rigid mentality. And I feel like if you live in an urban area, there's always these sort of like gray areas of uh, morality, or you know, there's 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 always some areas of lawlessness where people look the other way and stuff like that. But those guys seem to be very like 
we got to go by the book. There was a guy in some other documentary who was like, I think these guys, these guys will go to a restaurant and probably leave without even paying the tab. It fundamentally <laughs> don't understand them. It's like, yeah. they like over tipping sometimes because it's like a big dick move for them. Yeah. It's like they, they have the opposite reaction. They're not trying to get over on every single person they meet in the literal sense mm-hmm. of taking money from them. They are trying to get over on everyone in that they everyone is a co-star in their performance all the time. They fundamentally don't understand these guys. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, they're like, it's the law. <laughs> uh, what the hell else is I going to talk about? Um, do you, and... And I guess, like, you know more about this than I do, but it is kind of weird seeing people get such a hard on for Robert Mueller. Like, he's going to, like, you know, save the um, save the country. It's very weird to me. It's one of the strangest things I have ever seen. (laughs) Right, because I I don't know much about it, but it just kind of, like, rubs me the wrong way. Like, when you see Robert De Niro, like, play Robert Mueller on on SNL and people, like, go, like, cream their pants over it, you're just kind of like, what what is this? It just doesn't doesn't feel right. from your life? It's sort of like a mass psychosis, I think. And I think we're in this dangerous cultural moment where you have... You know, this liberal media market is, it, it's not as big as it seems. It seems a lot bigger because it's so dominant. Okay. But if you actually look at the numbers, it's, you know, there's got to be what, like, at most, like, three million people in America who really want, really love, like, uh, Robert De Niro as Mueller being epic all the time. Right. Or, like, Rachel Maddow or Sam <laughs> B. It's really not as many people as it seems, but it's okay. just, they're so fervent and it's all like my aunt who like watches msnbc and then watches fox news to get like the the other side (laughs) yeah (laughs) like like the fervent like the the the, it's feels so dangerous because the fervency of it is they are very direct in what they want which is they they don't it's not that they necessarily want ice abolished it's not that they necessarily want you know a total reversal of what trump has done to healthcare and want uh everyone to be covered it's not that they want a more equitable society all they want is to feel normal again they mm-hmm. want the big the big powerful fed to prosecute until everything feels normal mm-hmm. and that is fucking terrifying yeah if you want government enforced normalness it's very scary and i'm not saying that i'm not saying that the idea of prosecuting like whatever losers in the trump campaign whoever did is scary it's not it's not at all like mm-hmm. I'm a pretty uh, against people going to prison guy, but like if you're going to have a prison, send Paul Manafort to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm more talking about the cultural moment we are in with these people because there is a in the low millions people who I I feel like if Robert Mueller like showed up on TV and was like, all right, I'm I'm now pro consul for life. They'd be like, finally. (laughs) Right. And it's sort of fucking terrifying that they are that. You it's know, like an, a Law and Order episode to him almost, right? Yeah, and Trump did break them. Mm. He totally broke them because sure. all they do is read every single news report from you know Maggie Haberman about what a stupid, capricious old man he is, and they go to two marches a year, and the rest of the time they're just posting or reading this news that drives them insane, and they feel powerless and they just want they want it to feel like 2014 again they've already like idealized the space in their mind when they would watch hulu and obama was president forget that they weren't really that happy then it's just like yeah that felt so much safer i didn't have to worry when in fact most of these people their lives are not affected at all by this these are not the people right. whose lives yeah, absolutely. are absolutely most people are but th- these people are not mm-hmm. they just the feeling just hurts them so much yeah, because because I feel like if you talk to these people about actual policy, there wouldn't be much that they would say. Yeah, I mean, they, that you a return to norms. And I feel like they would take anything to get those norms back. Mm-hmm. And it's something I, I do kind of sympathize with because it's like, yeah, this feeling now sucks. Mm-hmm. I don't think we can argue the culture is not a billion times worse that everyone feels fucking insane and doesn't trust each other and everything yeah. sucks shit. But if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. That's a good point. To call Trump a Cheeto. <laughs> That's so, a good point. Yeah. That's right. 
We wouldn't have Trevor Noah <laughs> being confused. Our beloved, yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw a poster of Trevor Noah. I was walking over here, and it was like, it was a picture of him and then quotes from every other late night host saying that he was brilliant, which is like, I feel like that's kind of like what the culture is. It's a bunch of millionaires sucking each other off, you know? Mm-hmm. That, uh, for advertising. It is... I know a lot of people watch that show, but it is inconceivable to me that anyone would watch this and be like, this is funny. Yeah. I don't <laughs> get it. I just, I don't think they're watching uh, it to be, to laugh though. I think they want, they like that, that few, they like the self-righteousness uh, of it. Mm. Yeah. Because you he's, know. I don't, I've never heard anyone say, I'd like this joke that Trevor Noah told. No. He just literally re-describes the news to you in this sort of shitty tone. Yeah. I liked. Uh, I went to the He's Jordan sl- Klepper taping. That was a. Uh, he was pretty good. The opposition. He was. Yeah, it was. It was a fun. I don't watch it, but it was a fun. It feels like uh, yeah. recently they were like, guys, slam poetry's canceled, and they were people were like, well, where else are we gonna find the microphone <laughs> in a stage? <laughs> yeah. Who else is gonna listen to us? Yeah, five minutes. I'll be a writer for the Daily Show. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, what did you like about him? Because. Uh, I, like there's just some funny bits. Uh, you know they uh they talked about like. Are you uh, sure they were funny, or was your girlfriend just laughing at it? And she no, looked at you. They, and she was had, like, <laughs> "You weren't la- you were asleep." No. And she was like, mm. <laughs> "No." She was like, I "Laugh mean, at Jordan the, Klepper." <laughs> the, clo- the clothes wasn't that funny. They were ma- making fun of IHOB. Um, I wasn't. I was like, whatever on that. But like, uh, they were talking yeah. about what was like, a joke they told. Uh, they did a bit where they had like a graphic where they talked about like gaining clemency using like low level celebrities. If you're like a first time offender in jail, like this app would get you paired up with like a celebrity to like talk to Trump to get your pardon. And it was like oh, such that's, a funny. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's really better with their infographic. At least they're and, going. Yeah. That's like a j- actual joke. Yeah. It was. Which a, it I've was never seen on the Daily Show since. Right. Uh, yeah, Trump became president. You know, say Bill Maher. Everyone, you know, hates Bill Maher, and he sort of he does suck. But it's like, at least he tells yeah. jokes. Yeah, at least there is like a setup punch. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. he's actually doing a joke. Yeah, and I mean, you guys talked about this on your show, but um, it does it does feel like you know the character that Jordan Klepper is trying to play is like that that character is like in Staten Island, and he would probably do a better job hosting that Deb's Uncle Tommy should host that show <laughs> Deb's Uncle Tommy yeah. who thinks that that uh, the Jews are what's good in the world and, yeah. uh, and anyone who's against the Jews is evil <laughs> yeah I mean he should host that show they can't get that I feel like that type of writer's room and that type of guy like I'm sure he's like a funny like he's a very like competent comedian but I don't feel like they can understand why that type of guy is funny like why he's so he's, he's trying to do like an Alex Jones like Paul Joseph Watson guy right yeah mm-hmm. I don't, th- they can't drop like the liberal like smirkiness enough yeah. to like really dive into that character. Yeah. I've said it before, but Connor O'Malley did a concept thing like this one, like Truth oh, Hunters. Yeah. And it's one of the fun, it's fucking hilarious. It's because hilarious. O'Malley understands why these guys are like pathetic and dumb and vicious Yeah, in, in this way that like he actually dives into the character and it's incredible. And but it's O'Malley's not- brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I feel and it's not like, snarky the way that he does it. They're, it's horrifying to watch. It's yeah. horrifying because it feels very. You know, the whole time it's a joke, but it feels so real. Yeah, like it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, and in that heightened sense or that heightened character, when you're like reading teleprompter, it's like it feels like there's only like super sarcastic or like I'm a retard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no in between. That's like super fair and balanced. Yeah. Right. right. No, I do watch that show, and I'm like, who's this for? Oh, the the Clepper show? Yeah. Well, that's the weird thing about all those shows, both like Sam B and uh, everything except The Daily Show and Real Time, who actually do numbers. The media market for them really isn't that big. Okay. It's actually shocking how few viewers Sam B has, and it's actually shocking how few people watch cable cable news. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that one of the ways that, like, Twitter was sort of bad for comedy writing was people saw you know those those uh, uh news agencies or like uh spin-offs that are like Al Jazeera plus or like now this mm-hmm. and they'll be like the this grandmother sent an open letter to Donald Trump it'll be like <laughs> like sort of xylophone music playing throughout to yeah, tell you yeah. what to feel and we'll get like 10,000 retweets yeah. and i think 
TV writers like get a very blinkered view of the world when they see something gets a lot of retweets. They think, oh, this is universal. Everyone thinks this or everyone yeah. knows what I'm talking about and everyone thinks in this way now. So I have to tailor my writing towards that. Right. When in reality, uh, not as many people as they think are on Twitter. And okay. the market for people who consume stuff like that, it's about... 300,000 people mm -hmm. like online and then you probably add in like another You're talking about like the Sam the Sam B show. Or Sam the... B does about like a little over half a million um it, 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 I have to check it again, but I remember okay. seeing it and being like that seems very low and it's yeah. the same thing with yeah. uh, Joanne Reed. It's and the same thing with viewers did Roseanne get? <laughs> Roseanne got <laughs> multiples more than that. Multi incredible multiples more than that. It yeah. was... Yeah. I wait, mean... <laughs> wait until Roseanne gets her talking head desk show. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, if you, you got a Roseanne. That in a heartbeat. Like, I well, would. Yeah. I'd be fucking ridiculous. Well, the, uh, you know, it, we're within about two years. Mark this prediction now. The average Twitch stream will have, like, the highest level of Twitch, like Ninja, Dr. Lupo, Dr. Disrespect, they will have more viewers than any cable news host. Wow. That's it's Ninja, trending towards that. Ninja is the one that did the, with the stream with Drake. Hell yeah. Dude, Stav's getting into streaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I watch. So, I'll watch so, it here and I hear it again. So that's interesting. So so cable news is like this very small fragment of like the media and then so Oh, it's incredibly small, but it's incredibly it affects all the other media that much because the mm -hmm. people who the most avid media consumers and members of the media only they just drive themselves nuts watching that shit. So you think maybe it's the illusion of uh of of like that's the thing that everybody's watching? It punches above its weight, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think they're you know, I, I feel like we are underestimating the potential that Trump has to win again. Mm -hmm. I would say it's still more likely than not, in my opinion, that he is reelected because our media worlds have gotten even more blinkered. Mm -hmm. We seriously think everyone in the country knows who fucking, you know, uh, uh, who... Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell is yeah and watches segments on that show they don't most people like I always hate that argument from like Barry what like this sort of n n n never Trump but like mostly believe agree with him except on a few things uh yeah. conservatives where yeah. they're like oh this me too stuff is gonna make uh Republicans win again it's like no it's not that like a person will see that and hate it that's not the reality most people don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. Most people don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Whatever is big in a sort of uh, metropolitan media, like a uh, media market, uh -huh. they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's not that they're inherently uh, racist or sexist and they're like, oh, Black Lives Matter. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. It's like they just they have no idea. Yeah, they have no idea. They don't consume the media they that you do. Right. They they don't have a timeline, and if they do, it doesn't look like yours. It's like right. JJ Watt and shit. Mm -hmm. They just most people are like shockingly apolitical, and the potential those people have to you know maybe if we can if Trump is able to like juice this fake money economy a couple years more, and these people can like you know, look at the stock market or look that they have like a piddly amount extra in their paychecks because of the tax bill, but not really know like what a boon it is to the rich versus them. And, you know, something like, oh, they, I don't have to pay this Obamacare premium anymore. Even though their lives are about to get a lot worse, if yeah. they're not consuming the same thing you are and you're not really going for them because you think the whole world is your timeline. Yeah. He really might win again. Mm -hmm. If the only other party's messages were not him, and we're more blinkered than ever. Yeah. I did think about the last election. Remember how they were like, for the first time ever, Vanity Fair is a twisted candidate. It's like, yeah. who wow. the fuck read that? <laughs> who the fuck reads Vanity Fair and wasn't going to vote Democrat? Uh, honey, what are you here. talking about? Yeah. yeah. And it's not yeah. that that like, I mean, the reactionaries are stupid because they're like, oh, normal people see that. And they're like, oh, I hate Vanity Fair. I'm not going to. They just don't know what it is. They like saw it in an airport once. and like, yeah, oh, huh, OK. Mm -hmm. Oh, this Trump guy seems crazy. He's stupid like my boss. Uh, I want to vote for Trump, please. <laughs> yeah. Harambe, please. 
Um, yeah, there's somebody in my feed who's like aggressively pro Hillary, and she was like, uh, all of all of Bernie's peers hate him, and it's like, yeah, all of Bernie's great peers, like uh, Chuck Schumer and <laughs> Nancy Pelosi, and all those pillars of uh, you know. Yeah, and it, it, it's like, imagine like that's your selling point to the average person. It's like, did you know that? Chuck Schumer doesn't like working with Bernie. They'd be like, who, what? Yeah. What are you, are you insane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all these people, how do we, how do we get them our podcasts? You know, how do we get them listening to this, to us while they're on their tractors? I, uh, <laughs> donate a hundred dollars to Ninja the next time he's streaming and I have him read out the URL of your podcast. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's right. pretty. Then the farmer's yeah. kids will see that. Okay. Right, and they'll be like, "Hey, these guys in New York City make a yeah. podcast about the mafia." Yeah, and it'll just, it'll just Re- request they, us on your FM radio. Yeah. Uh, it'll just yeah. be what their kids play while they're looking at gay porn <laughs> 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 to, to drown it out. <laughs> That's why they're laughing at that computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, do we have to wrap up? Yeah, we're uh, we're looking good. We usually ask guests if they want to plug anything, but you know. Uh, Are you doing a Twitch? Yeah, I'm doing a Twitch. This Uh, comes out Wednesday. So probably by the end of this week, we'll have it up and running. Nice. I'm very excited about it. If any of you are familiar with my friend, Michael Eminem Obama, many of you are. This is one of the only places you'll see him. I. uh, What are you going to be streaming? Fortnite. I will be doing the entire Metal Gear series as was requested of me. Cool. We're going to do Black Ops because Michael has to be can't just be great at Fortnite, he has to be great at another game. But sure. also Battlefield, because that's like the one multiplayer game I am really good at. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Now the new one that's coming out, that's World War Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. It'll be fun. Battlefield 1 was incredible. It was a fun I game. Still play yeah. It. yeah. Um, cool. I well, say that I say that like disconnected, like I didn't literally spend like a year getting as good as it, at it as I could. <laughs> yeah. Just out of like pure competitive right. compulsion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, Far Cry was good. I, I kind of, I kind of want to play Far Cry Five. I have like a PC that can run it maxed out now. So have I you guess. played Final Fantasy Fifteen yet? I don't like those games. I'm just, I'm just on a road trip with my boys and looking at photos. It's real boring. <laughs> I, I, have yeah. you uh, Final, sitting around fires? It's I so saw stupid. when I lived with Amber and Nick. I would see Nick play it, and it looked like you remember the the Hellfire. Or the Hellfish episode of The Simpsons where they give the painting back to the German noble. Yeah. They're like, we're returning this to the its rightful owner. It's like, it's that guy is the star of the game. It's so, I don't know. It's not good so far. <laughs> it looks pretty boring. Yeah. Oh, the uh, watch the CD changer in my trunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are the guys in the game. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you literally can't drive the car and uh, you have to pay money. You have to pay in-game money to fast forward. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it'll, say, it'll say like estimated eight minute car ride. So and what do you do? Just you can yeah. set the controller down and the characters will talk. You can pack a bowl. <laughs> Just re- relax while you're playing. Nice. Yeah. You don't mod, do you? No, I don't. You mean like mod my PC or like mod games? Mod games. No, I never knew how to do that. I played yeah. a lot of mods, but I never knew how to do it. Okay. Yeah, it seems very complicated. You know, it's not complicated though, folks. Sign, giving us money on Patreon. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Go to patreon.com slash sit down pod and uh, donate. You get a new episode every week. We um we uh, posted a picture of uh, Deb's friend's feet uh, last week yeah. that you should uh, check out. She's got some beautiful feet. <laughs> She got some good arches. <laughs> let me tell you, baby. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so those shows are fun. Um, and then email us sitdownpod at gmail dot com. Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Um, Matt's cell phone number is eight one eight nine five four seven nine two nine. Actually, can I give your number out? <sighs> can I give Shelby's number out? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right. Folks, email me for Matt or Shelby's phone number. I'll happily give it to you. Michael Racine at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Bye-bye. See ya.